Hello everyone and welcome to Social Club. Paul and the rest of that lot, they haven't all gone to the United States, but Paul and the boys have gone. So we're doing Social Club from down south. We've got Flav from the Fighting Cock uh, join us this time. And dressed as his uh, favourite player, Phil Jones. We've got Elliot from the Bear Pit TV. And we've got Bench. And we've got Bench. Benchy. Oh, oh Benchy McBench, who <laughs> contributes in a, in a huge way every single week. Uh, let's get into the first talking point, which has got to be Sam Allardyce is the new England manager. He's had his first press conference today. He didn't confirm that Rooney would be either in the squad or the captain. Uh, he said he wanted to create a feel-good factor and he doesn't see it as a poison chalice. Do you agree with that? Uh, I, 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 no, it is a poison chalice. It's been <laughs> yeah, no, no, it's been it yeah, yeah, no, it's proven to be that way since the, the beginning of football. I mean, it's the worst job in the world. But I understand why managers are attracted to it, especially someone like Allardyce, who's a kind of traditionalist, an old school English manager with modern approaches to the game. Let's not, let, you know, let's not be too harsh on him. Um, Don't you think that's such a damning thing that even that the main, the main options were the guys who, who, who wanted it. Shouldn't everyone want the England job? Uh, there've been that many managers that have just taken a job. Uh, when you think of England, you'll think of the top names, but you know, Mourinho, Pep Guardiola, Klopp. They've all taken jobs recently. And it didn't leave much choice out there, to be honest. You say they all, they, there was two managers that wanted your job. <laughs> Harry Redknapp and Sam Allardyce. <laughs> Eddie Howe was like, Steve, Eddie Howe giving bollocks. He's yeah. like, I don't want that. He didn't want it, did he? Why would, because he's an intelligent man. <laughs> <laughs> he wouldn't take it. Why, would, why, wouldn't he, why would he risk his, uh, having to rebuild his club career by taking a job as difficult as the England team? Yeah. Um, when so, it comes to Allardyce, though, do you think it's... But I feel slightly strange about the fact that everyone's quite optimistic about it. I, I am, are you? Yeah, I I'm, I'm can't wait. I can't wait to be on there the singing Allah, 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 Allah. <laughs> can't wait. Can't um, wait. Is that, that, that diagram to your brain? Is that yeah, <laughs> I think it has. No, but, I can't wait. I can, honestly can't wait. And I can't wait for a style of football because I don't care how horrible it is. I don't care how unattractive it is. I'd rather win every single game 1 0 and play horrifically and win the World Cup than not. Oh, we've had this argument, Flav, go on. I would absolutely not. <laughs> I wouldn't want to be bored to death. I get that, like, this, this is not a dig, but as a Stoke fan, you don't get to see that much, you know, victory, and you're, you're, built, part, mate. you're built up on a diet of direct <laughs> <laughs> like, you're Stoke alone nowadays, we've completely changed. You yeah. have changed, you, you have changed. Um, but, you know, it, Allardyce's football, I'll tell you what it is, actually, it, it has been known to be functional, but I think, and I may be wrong here, that it's a little bit harsh to judge Allardyce on his football because he's always done what he's had to do with the tools at his disposal. And he's never had those those kind of players that, that, that enabled him to play a brand of football. That he that Kevin it's Nolan's. Like, ain't like <laughs> yeah, well that's his own doing though, isn't it? He? he just dragged him along to every club he's bloody managed. Yeah, but he's a perfect player to adopt a system that will save a team from relegation. So you understand why he does that. He knows how to save a club. He's, he's been typecast into a role as a manager. Oh, we need to stay up. Who's about Sam Allardyce? So that, that's just the way it is. The only time he went to a club where he could have potentially they had the size to attract attract the players that I presume he wanted was Newcastle, and that that went horrendously yeah. back in two thousand six. Yeah, Twenty five games. I think he, he mm. won six of the first eleven. Then it all went a bit wrong, and Mike Ashley got in Kevin Keegan because the fans. Who does it go right for at Newcastle? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, fair point. Again, another. So, another. so why has he got the job? It's tactically... Apart from wanting it. Apart from being like you actually wanted it. The, the, what, the three reasons I think they said was it tactically sound, um, can experiment, because some, some Allardyce, they know his typecast is this big long hoofer of the ball and long football, horrible football, but he's one of the managers who's always been ahead of the times with uh, technology, with the, you know, the science behind football. He's one of the first with an earpiece, someone in the stands watching the game from above, all the shape, etc. So he's got that about him, and also to inspire people. And you can see some if some Allardyce was screaming at me in the changing room, I'd probably go out there and try and win a game for him. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Just go back to what I was about to say to finish that point before you really interrupt me. The, uh, <laughs> for Bolton, right? For Bolton, right? He, he he went there. The only time he was allowed to properly bring in players like Jukayev or Kocha was when he was stable, when he had a premiership, a stable premiership team. And he turned Bolton into a good team. Okocha was one of the most exciting, exciting yeah. players of the Premier League era. So when he gets the opportunity to, and hopefully with England he's now got that, um, we may actually see an attacking, uh, attacking brand of football. And I'm quite excited now. I don't know, what, when I first heard it, I thought, what have they done? What have the FA done? You know what we need, a complete abandonment 
of, of the FA. We need to we need to break it down into into kind of chapters that are responsible for dealing. So one little chapter of the FA deals with the deals with the media. One deals with picking coaching staff. One deals with player contracts, because at the moment it's just a mess. But they might have pulled it out of the bag with Big Sam Allardyce. You don't think this is kind of just a very British right? We've got this guy now. Let's let's hope he does well. <laughs> I'm just playing devil's advocate here, because yeah. I bet Robbie will be screaming at this video right now, going, <laughs> we need a winner. Yeah. He hasn't won anything, he hasn't won a major honour. So, he did, he won. Well, but I guess you're saying is, is that he's, he's done the best with what he's had, and that essentially is what international football is, is all about. One thing I would say about his style of play, is a really interesting article in The Guardian, I think it's Michael Cox, talking about his tactics last season. He's known for sort of playing percentage football and hitting it long to, to a big man. They played Jermaine Defoe up, last, mm. up front last season. And, and the fullbacks were uh, Yedlin and Van Arnholt, who were both very good, very attacking players. So if you were slightly worried about the style of play that England have played and the players who are decent, like the fullbacks, which, we, which were probably the, the only area where we had a little bit of success uh, at the tournament, the style of play that he's actually played at, uh, at Sunderland, he should be able to, to adopt here. Yeah, you yeah. would think so. So this, the, the system suits... Uh, a team full of technical, powerful players. Uh, England have those players. Mm. So if it is about using that ideology and, and, and just implanting the correct characters in that, the correct pieces in that jigsaw piece, then perhaps he is well suited and tactically he does have the, the right minerals in order to make a successful he's England. definitely got minerals. What, what are the big, big challenges that he's going to... imagine the size of his balls out there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you see the size of his hands. <laughs> <massive. laughs> Uh, what, are the, what are the challenges that he's going to have to face then, um, as England manager? That I guess every England manager has the egos, the players. Do you uh, think the players will be that will be a problem? I don't, I don't know. He's, I mean, he's already caused a stir today with not announcing Rooney as his captain straight away. But there's you know there's another side of the coin to that. It's, you know, it's professional. Some managers won't make any decision without speaking to the player first. Yeah. You know, but you know some people are kicking off and saying, you know, he's going to try and properly shake it up. Um, but, you know, so he's got to deal with the players first, all the egos, as usual, the, with all the overpaid England stars. There's always a load of egos to deal with. Mm. I, I think his ego is, is, is big enough and strong enough to not be kind of swayed by any of that. But Hodgson, one of his many faults is that he's, he's, he's too meek. He, he doesn't, do, apparent, I mean, from the outside looking in, he doesn't seem to exude any authority. He's obviously a man of shrewd football knowledge. You know, he, he understands the game, there's no denying that, but it's so much more about motivating your players. Yeah. And I think Allardyce is going to be excellently placed to do that because, again, he's got form of, uh, you know, previous of doing it. And I think there's a feeling, I think, amongst a lot of football fans, and you can let us know in the comments below, that people are quite excited that he's going to be, he's going to be honest and he's going to shake it up a little bit and he's not going to pick players just because they're from some of the big teams. And... Because the press and the it, it's so intense, isn't it? And the, I tell you what, as soon as it goes wrong, they'll be on him, won't they? Straight away. So you've got to have, as you said, the minerals uh, to to get on with that and, and deal with it. Uh, he, uh, everyone has, he, yeah, no, no doubt. He will. The minute it starts going wrong, the, the press will turn on him completely, as they have done in, you know, to every manager in history that we've ever had, pretty much, right? But. He has a good chance of swinging them around and getting them on board, mm. um, in the same way that Redknapp would have done, because he's pally with them. Um, so he's probably going to get a, a longer stay of leave than, than most managers would. If certainly a foreign manager coming in, but um, yeah, he's going to have to run the gauntlet like anybody else. Mm. I think actually for a healthy England team, the press need to back off massively. The press are a massive, massive problem with with the England team, and and, and they walk around. If you listen to them on Talksport. They walk around as if it's their God-given right to criticise the minute that things go wrong, when none of them really have a clue. Yeah. No football fans have a clue what's going on. <laughs> none of us do, really. Keep so, watching. <laughs> yeah, I mean, look, it, it, the interesting thing about... Have the fans got a part to play in this as well? Because I think, I, I certainly I noticed that as soon as it all went wrong with Hodgson... Boom. It was vitriolic. It was incredible. The so problem was... You've got to stick with the team and the manager, have you not? So, as a group so of many. Like everyone could see what was going wrong with Hodgson so early on. I mean, it, even from the I World Cup. I, I didn't see it. I, 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 I was Cup. happy after the, the, uh, the game against Russia. I was chuffed to bits. Yeah, I, I thought, thought we'd play great. on and do it. No. But I guess to move it forward, and to, but to stay with that, the pressure of the press and of the fans, what, does, what is success for, for Allardyce as England manager? He's got a two-year deal. You can't say success is going to win the World Cup because 
well, that would obviously that'd be a big success, but that that isn't a realistic target. I think you should try and make quarters semis at, at least. Do you uh, think? But like, sure, he'll get, he'll get, he'll get done surely if they don't make the quarterfinals because the expectations of England fans they might go, oh, it's at an all-time low and England are at rock bottom. That's nonsense. If they qualify for the tournament, they're going to expect them to win it. Don't you think? He's got to win it. <laughs> He's got to win the World Cup. That's the truth. That's what, like, you know, we saw it in, in the comments in a lot of our videos that England fans, they might pretend that they don't expect the world. They do expect the World oh, Cup. Yeah. should. Look yeah. how much money we pump into football. Mm. Look how much money we spend in this country supporting the infrastructure in the game. If, if it's not about England being in a position in the next 24 months, if Allardyce can't get them ready for that World Cup so they can challenge, then there's literally no point making this appointment. There's two years of football that he has to work with the squad he wants. I get what you're saying, like, then we're not going to win the World Cup, so we should temper our why not? expectations. We're definitely we not going to get relegated. Why not? We just won't. Yeah, you won't get relegated. We won't get relegated. Yeah, sure. We'll Keep qualify, that we'll, we'll, we'll go through probably undefeated, and we'll get to the World Cup, and we, we won't win it, because that's just what's happened. But the expectation should be that we, that we will, and Allardyce, you know, if he's as good as he thinks he is, then we should be in a position to be challenging for that World Cup. The problem is, is that we'll go through the qualifying process, we'll do well, but no one will actually believe that we can because we've seen it all before again. And you know, that's part of the, the struggle that he's got to deal with. Yeah. You know what we should do, just, I don't know if you want to round up, but just, he should say, I'm not appointing an England captain. You just don't appoint one. What, and that'll make him win the World Cup? No, it will just <laughs> remove one of the needless burdens we have. And this, this oh, who's going to be captain? This, well, let, let's place the captain on this, um, this, uh, what do you call it, like plimp, pedestal. right? Pedestal. Pedestal. Yeah. <laughs> Put on a pedestal where he can't be substituted, he can't be dropped. Um, the weight of the world, uh, of the country's expectations are on his shoulder, affects their performance. It's an out of date, archaic, uh, w w pointless position in the football team. It's not necessary anymore. Come out and say, no England captain. I just can't wait to see the lads' faces when they go for a swig of a bottle and it's just full of uh, Bovril. <laughs> Get your fluids in. Get your fluids in there. Fluids in. Ah. Vital fluids. Uh, the one thing, I, last thing I want to say is there's a big thing about this England DNA. And a lot of people saying that Allardyce, his style of play can't fit to that. But he was saying that the first, say what you, he's saying say what you want about DNA, but the first team is about, it's about being successful. And the two sort of pillars, some two pillars that supposedly England should be strong at according to this DNA that they haven't been is tactically and psychologically. And the hope is that his man management will make the difference in that in that sense. And the tactics will be quite simple. So we'll win the World Cup quite, quite easily. It's a done deal. It's a done deal now. You've convinced me. I just, when you said DNA, I just imagine him just issuing his DNA on <laughs> the wall. That's <laughs> DNA everywhere. So speaking of walls, that DNA is plastered everywhere around St. George's Park. Like, it's, it's just yeah, all yeah. those quotes exactly. that they, on the So walls. that must have been a difficult part of the process of, of going, we go for some other <laughs> It's not really like, don't, he doesn't really pass it much, does he? But anyway, he's done it we, now. We're all resigned to, uh, to the fact that Allardyce is manager, and some people are quite, quite happy about that. Um, that. We can do nothing now but get behind him and, he, and his new ideas, and you know, I hope he does brilliantly, because I want an England team I'm proud of. And just, just, <laughs> just want to see him Honestly, win. big Sam. <laughs> just win. 2018 summer, back in Marbella, celebrating yeah. again. Yeah. <laughs> Love it. Imagine <laughs> Sam Allardyce, World Cup winner. Mate, this is it. This is our chance. We wanted Mike Bassett as manager for a long time, and he's here. We've got him. He's here. Right, there we go. Uh, that's our thoughts on Sam Allardyce, but we want to hear what you think about this. Is he the right man for the job? Were you impressed by his uh, press conference? Should Rooney be captain or even in the squad? Let us know in the comments below, and stay tuned for more from Social Club.